Hello. Welcome to class. Have a seat, young lady. Yeah. Hi. Um, today, we're going to talk about tournaments for a second. In fact, uh, a company you've never heard of, chess.com. Um, I do lectures for them in video series is, is, is occasionally. And the next video series I'm doing is going to be on the transition from playing online to playing in tournaments and what the difference is. Yes? I have a chess.com account. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. um, if only you have heard of chesskid.com, your turn to raise your hand again. I don't. Well, you never heard of Chess Kid? It's the same company, but it's for kids. Okay, yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, occasionally I play rated chess because we have an odd number of people. And then somebody doesn't play a game, they get a buy. And then somebody will play them if they want to, um, usually. And sometimes they want to play me and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they want to play Karen, and occasionally there's just other parents like hanging around. Um, in fact, once a long time ago, we had a parent who played but never played in a tournament, and to play an extra rated game, he had to join the USCF, and he did. So that was funny. Okay, so last week on Saturday, I played two extra rated games, and yesterday I played one. So. Normally when I play extra rated games, my opponents aren't very good, but that has to do with the, the situation. The situation is they have a buy because they have the least amount of points and they're the lowest rated. That's why they get a buy. So that means my opponent is the lowest rated and has no points. So that means, you know, they're usually not so good. Although I had an extra rated game about three months ago that I was losing to a 1000 and then I ended up winning. Does Archer remember his name? Was it Varun? Yeah, it was Varun, yeah. Okay, so this guy is on his floor, which means we couldn't play chess on the table. Right, Archer? Because he was on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the USCF, in their infinite wisdom, has decided that if you're older and getting worse at chess and your rating is going down, you might stop playing chess because your rating is going down. And so what they do is they artificially make sure your rating doesn't go down. And that's called a floor. That means you have some rating and then you have a floor that you can't go below because they said so. My floor is 2200. So if I lose every game the rest of my life, I'll be 2200. I can't go below that. Um, this guy's floor is 1,200, and every tournament he plays in, he loses rating points, except he doesn't, because he's 1,200. He can't go below 1,200. Okay, and um, he's 1,200, and I'm playing him, and he played F4, confusing the audience. It's the bridge, okay. What? It's the bridge. Yeah, the bird is the word. And I don't face that very often, because you'll notice that it opens up the king. So it's the beginning of the two-move checkmate, which I played it gambit, e5. Now, if white plays g4, which is a strange move, then I play checkmate. Then I would win. Is that what happened? Unfortunately not. Now, uh, there's only one person in the room old enough to have heard of the television show Columbo. I don't know if you've heard of it, though. Okay. And Columbo, um, the real person, is Peter Falk. And he died a few years ago. And he was actually a chess player. He was actually a tournament chess player. And I saw him at a tournament. And in more than one episode, there's chess. And there's an episode where the guy playing for the World Chess Championship, he's the suspect. He's the murder suspect. And he's being followed everywhere by Columbo. Columbo's a police detective. And the guy's giving a simultaneous exhibition where he's playing a lot of people. And so he sees Columbo, so he's getting nervous. And and uh, in the simultaneous, the world champion does does fall into the two move checkmate, showing that he's nervous because Columbo's following him. So it's a very suspicious storyline. Okay, now my opponent, of course, took the pawn because taking pawns is good. Now he's up a pawn. Now this is not checkmate because he can block with the pawn. So that's unfortunate. Now everybody in the world plays the same move here, but I don't do that. Everybody plays d6, and then after takes. 
takes. Now we are threatening checkmate. So if black, if white makes a bad move like that, then we check. You have to get out of check. Now we have two different checkmates. We have the queen sacrifice, which is checkmate, right? Or you could not sacrifice the queen and sack your bishop and still checkmate. Okay, and so white always plays knight f3, stopping queen h4 check. Okay, and then g5, and then here, white can play either g3 or d4, and I've actually faced them both, but I don't play d6 anymore. Okay, everybody plays d6. I play knight c6 because nobody plays that. Then my opponents are like, what? Nobody plays that. Notice I'm attacking the pawn. Did you notice that? No. And there's two ways to protect it. You can protect with the pawn or with the knight. And one of them works and one doesn't. Right? Yeah. See, I can't make that joke. Okay. So after d4, which protects the pawn, white can actually win this pawn. White can? Black can win the pawn. You, unknown. Check. You play queen h4 check because it's check and you're also attacking the pawn So you, you get your pawn back. I don't like white's pawn structure here very much. Okay, so you play knight f3 And he's defending his pawn and I play g5 because I want to play g4. I've had this position Maybe four times in tournaments maybe 20 times in blitz chess and I think in every single game my opponents played d4 but this guy did not. He stopped g4 by playing h3. Now I can't play g4. Man, if I could put like a queen here or a bishop here, that would be good. No cheating. Okay, so I played d6, and I thought if he takes and I take, that's a pretty serious threat. Checkmate, right? No. Okay, so he didn't do that. He developed his knight, and when I take the pawn, now the material is equal. So I sacrificed a pawn on move one, and by move five, I already got it back. Okay, and now he really surprised me. He played g4. I mean, he already stopped g4, so him playing g4 is weird. And I played h5, because I want to attack over there. The computer actually likes h5. Now I was shocked. I thought he would take it. But he developed his bishop, so now I'm a pawn up. Takes, takes. Now the rooks are attacking each other. So takes, takes, and then I take a pawn. Yay, I'm a pawn up. So I sacrificed a pawn on move one, and I move nine, I'm ahead of pawn. And nothing much is going on, I'm just up a pawn. So we developed our pieces, and he castled, and I didn't castle yet. And this is called something you've never heard of. What's that called? Remember, you've never heard of it. No, nothing. No, she's correct. Because if, if she doesn't know, then I'm right. She never heard of it. You! Pin? That's right. Now, here's a tough question. What kind of pin? Now, the American World Champion was Bobby Fischer, so it's a Bobby pin. <laughs> right. Now, uh, Archer with the right answer. A relative pin? Relative. So like, if you're playing your mom, that's a relative pin. Okay. So... There's two kinds of pins in chess. There's a relative pin, which means it's a pin, but you can still move it. But I don't recommend it, right? So for example, if I said you're not allowed to drive 100 miles an hour, and you're not allowed to jump and touch the moon, you actually could do one of those things. The other one you can't do. It's sort of like a pin. You can, you can move a piece that's pinned if it's a relative pin. I don't recommend it. Then there's an absolute pin where you can't move it because it's check. We didn't see that yet. Maybe we'll see it later. My opponent didn't want to be pinned, so he took drastic measures to not be pinned. He attacked my bishop. Oh, I thought he attacked my bishop. He attacked it later. Okay. And I moved my bishop, and he attacked it again. Normally, when you castle, you don't want to move all the pawns where your king is because then your king isn't so safe. And now, I couldn't decide whether to play bishop b6 or to take this and sack a piece. In fact, I still don't know which is right. Let's ask the engine. The engine's better than me. It says after bishop b6, black is slightly better, and after knight takes, it's equal. It says they're about the same. Yeah. Okay. And I actually changed my mind while I was thinking. I was like, I'm going to go here. Then I'm like, nah, I'll go here. Then I'm like, nah, I'll go here. 
and I finally made a decision. I made what's called a practical decision, confusing the children. Except that's what Archer does every move of every game. He doesn't know he does that, but that's what he does. Okay, so as you say often, I've heard you say this, theory and practice are the same in theory, but not in practice, right? Yeah, yeah your mom nodded, and you were like, what? Yeah, okay, so theory is what's supposed to happen. When you get on an airplane, you're supposed to fly to where you're going, right? Practice is what actually happens. You crash land in Philadelphia, okay? No, nothing? Yeah. yeah. Was that last week? Yeah. Okay. And so, in theory, this class starts at 11. Is that when it started? No. Okay. So, in theory, Bishop B6 is a better move. But in practice, this is a better move. Because now, even though I'm down a piece, my opponent has a lot of problems to solve. He solved them by giving up. That solved them. He didn't have any more. Right? Okay, man, I can't make that joke either. Darn. Okay, so I guess I should never make a Louis C.K. joke in a chess class. Probably risky. All right, so in this position, the computer says it's equal, and the move it suggests is really crazy. It's not a move a human would think of normally. The computer wants to sacrifice the knight. And in this way, the bishop is open, and the queen gets to come in here and be annoying. And instead, he made the worst move. And then after his worst move, he gave up. Okay, and he attacked my knight. This is the kind of move a lot of bad players would make because they like to attack things. Sort of like they like things that are shiny. Like, ooh, I attack something. So in this position, I'm not really pinning his knight because there's a pawn here. So he can move his knight anywhere he wants to. However, if he moves his pawn, which he did, now, now it is pinned. And his bishop is on this nice long diagonal. That's the longest diagonal I could find. And he blocked the diagonal, so his bishop's sort of silly there. It's behind this pawn and this knight. So that's not, that's not scaring me. Okay. And after the move e4, since he pinned his knight and my knight's attacked, I moved my knight and attacked his knight. And now he thought for about two minutes and didn't like it. And not only am I threatening his knight, because I am, I have a lot of other threats. So for example, I have two pieces on his knight, and he has one defending it. Two is more than one. Yeah. And I also have other threats that are even more scary. For example, Archer. Bishop takes c3. Yeah, so I'm threatening bishop takes c3, he would take back, and then I have this fork, which wins his queen. So he doesn't want me to basically take anything. If I take this, I'm winning. If I take this, I'm winning. If I take this, I'm winning. And since this knight is pinned on c3 to his queen, if I attack the knight again with something like queen c6 or knight b5, I don't really see what he would do about that. For example, let's say I go here. How are you, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, e4 was really bad. Because then after this, I have a million threats. He can't stop them all. Now, he did stop them all because he gave up. I don't recommend that. Let's go back. In this position, if we turn on the engine, it says equal. Okay? It says nobody's winning. Then when he plays the move e4, this red light goes on. Red is bad. Right? Yeah, and then it says knight d4, which is what I played. And now look at those numbers. Those are a lot of numbers. 5.2. Yeah, if you're up 5, that's good. Yeah. Okay, you shouldn't be up 5 unless your opponent really did something bad. So he went from equal to completely losing because of one bad move. He realized here, wow, I'm losing. So he gave up. And actually, even though I sacrificed a piece, how many pawns do I have for it? Yeah, I have six pawns, and he has three pawns. So even though I'm down, I'm, I'm down a knight, I have three extra pawns, so that's not bad. And my pieces are pretty good. Look how active my pieces are. His pieces are all in the back, you know, not very good. Yeah, not threatening me. My pieces are threatening him. So e4 was a terrible blunder, and then he resigned. Now, 
First of all, you should never resign. Okay, but probably you're not going to have a lot of games in a tournament against a grandmaster. And since most of the people you are playing are not a grandmaster, to put it nicely, resigning isn't a good idea because you could have a position where you're down two queens, but you still win. You won't win against me down two queens, but against whomever you're paired with, you could. When I was a kid, I read a lot of chess books. And it always said white resigns, black resigns, white resigns, black resigns. Because I'm reading books and the people in the books are grandmasters. And when they're down a piece or down a rook, they resign. And so I was like, wow, that must be good to resign because grandmasters do it. That didn't make any sense because my rating was 900 and my opponent's rating was 800. And so I could be down a queen and win because they don't, they don't play very well. So you should never resign until you're a grandmaster and you're playing another grandmaster then you probably have a good idea. Now, yesterday I was watching the Boston Celtics play the Milwaukee Bucks. And when Archer went to sleep, the score was pretty close. And then when the game was about to end, there was about five minutes left, Boston was up by like 22 points. So that, that's over. So I didn't watch the end of the game, I just turned it off because it's over, okay? now. In basketball or any other sport, you're not allowed to resign. So if you were down 30 points and there's 40 seconds left, you're gonna lose for sure, but you have to play for 40 seconds. And sometimes they don't play, they just dribble the ball and they like look at their watch. They're not actually trying, they're just like, well, it's over. They're shaking hands like, yeah, you won. Okay, and if you were allowed to resign in football, baseball, basketball, hockey, there would be resigning. It would happen. You'd be like, well, we're down 30 points with a minute left, we resign, and the game would end. But that's not allowed. If you're watching football, and you're up by 28 points, and there's one minute left, you could resign, but you're not allowed to. In chess, you are allowed to resign, and some people think you shouldn't be. Some people want to change the rules, and say, the governing bodies in tournaments shouldn't let people resign. You have to play till checkmate or stalemate. And the reason is, if you're watching chess online, which you've done, and you want to popularize the game, and you want everybody to watch, even people who don't know how to play, which I have. Some people are like, you're funny, I don't know how to play chess, but I'll watch anyway. And then when they resign, and they're like, why'd he resign? And you're like, well, my past pawn's gonna queen. They're like, what's a past pawn? What's a queen? Okay, so I could have a position where I'm really winning and my opponent resigns, and people are like, why'd he resign? However, if we kept playing, and I checkmated him, then that's the end of the game. So a lot of people think to make chess more popular, they should stop resigning, that they shouldn't allow that. Just like in other sports, they don't allow it. They make you keep playing, can't just resign. Okay, and in fact, there have been instances in tennis where a guy obviously gave up, but he's not allowed to give up. So they just stop playing good. And those people get in trouble. If they think you did that, they can fine you. So let's say you're playing tennis and you're getting crushed and you're gonna lose for sure. Then you're just like, oh well, and you just hit the ball into the net, hit it out, like sort of on purpose. So the points are over. Well, you can't do that, you have to try. And so it's against the rules to not try. And that's very rare, but it happens. Okay, so this guy gave up confusing the audience. Luckily, we have a very intelligent audience here, so you're not confused. Okay. Now, the next two games featured illegal moves. That's the kind of people I'm playing. Okay? And I did not allow my opponents to make the illegal moves before they hit the clock. I'm like, no, no, you can't do that. Okay. So this person's rated 700. They're the best player in their chair on one condition. If nobody else is touching, if nobody else is touching their chair. Right. Then, okay. So I'm playing this guy. He wanted to play me. And... Here, I played a very unusual move, confusing the audience. This is called the Queen's Gambit. Here, grandmasters play three moves. They take the pawn, a favorite of Fabiano Caruana. They play E6, the Queen's Gambit declined, and they play C6, defending the pawn. There's three moves that I play that nobody plays. The Chagorin, the Baltic, and the Albin Counter Gambit, all very suspicious. 
but I've played them a lot and I know them pretty well. And my opponents are like, what? Those aren't, those aren't normal moves. In this game, since my opponent's 700, I played E5, the Albin Counter Gambit. And this actually has a very famous trap that was invented over 100 years ago, maybe over 150 years ago. And my opponent didn't fall into that trap because my opponent played a weird move right here. The normal move is to take my pawn. But my opponent took the other pawn, which I've never seen, so I was confused. Okay, Taking this pawn wins a pawn. Then you play this move. And white's up a pawn, but the position is very strange. Because white can't go here, because his knight's attacked. This pawn's not too safe. Okay, so he took this pawn. I took back. And he played knight c3. And this is very funny, because in the previous game, I sacrificed a pawn on move 1. And on move 5, I won it back. And on move 9, I was ahead of pawn. In this game, I sacrificed a pawn on move 2. And my opponent didn't take it. And then on move 4, I was up a pawn. So everybody's given their pawns away. All right. So he didn't trade queens. And he attacked my queen. And now, after e4, I attacked his queen again. Bishop e6. Notice my bishop is attacking his queen, because I said so. Right? And now he made an illegal move. He tried to. I didn't let him. Could you see what illegal move he made? He moved into check. Yeah. He tried to move the knight? Yeah, he blocked my bishop with his knight. And before he hit the clock, I said, you're in check, you can't do that. Now, that's another interesting thing, um, as we discussed before the class started, or as the class started. Tournament chess and online chess have some differences. One difference is if you're playing on the internet or you're playing on my computer, like I'm just showing you stuff, it won't let me make an illegal move. If I play knight here, it won't let me. It just puts it back. It's like, what are you doing? Okay, it can't make it illegal. If you play on the internet on like chess.com or any site, you can't do that. It won't let you. If you're playing in a tournament, you can do that. And if your opponent doesn't say anything, then you can keep doing it. So if my opponent went here and I didn't say anything and I took his knight, we would just keep playing. And there's rules about that. If an illegal move is noticed within 10 moves, you go back. If it's more than 10 moves, that's, that's what happened. You can't go back. And that makes it difficult to put the game in the computer when the won't let me. There's actually a feature in chess space that lets you make an illegal move. So if you're at a kids tournament and the kids aren't advanced, you see illegal moves and the opponent doesn't notice. And then at some point, a kid's like, why is my king been in check for seven moves? <laughs> then the director comes, he's like, I don't know. Now, if you're keeping notation, you could try to go back and figure out what happened. But if you're not keeping notation, I wouldn't trust the kids who can't make legal moves. Just an etiquette question. If, you, if your opponent makes an illegal move, do you say, you said you said something, if you're, if you're hurt, do you say something? Is that okay? Or do you raise your hand and like... If I were you, I would always raise my hand when anything weird happens. I would never settle with your opponent. That's not good. Now, in this instance, I was the director. Right. So, but, and also I'm very experienced, so I know what to do. But you should always raise your hand and tell the director what happened. Like, he went here, that's illegal. Then the director will do what's supposed to be done. Now, in this instance, my opponent didn't hit the clock, because I told him before he did. If they don't hit the clock, it's not illegal yet. So there's no penalty. You just go back and do something else. So if you said you can't do that before he hits the clock, that's fine. But if he hits the clock, now you got to raise your hand. Because now things have to happen. Like, you get two extra minutes. But you can't do that. The director has to do that. Because your clock's running. After they move, hit the clock, your clock's running. Right, right. So now the director has to give you, you know, some right. time. Okay. okay. So well, one more thing. If this knight could legally move, he has to. So this is illegal. For example, it's illegal to play queen b6. So if your opponent plays queen b6 and hits the clock, the director says, okay, you get two minutes because that's illegal. And you touched your queen, so you have, so you have to... Okay. Now, let's say, this is a funny one, let's say your opponent picks your bishop off the board, okay, and then takes it with the knight, okay, and you're like, um, the knights don't move like that. Now, you call the director, and you say, director, 
my opponent touched my bishop and tried to take it. And the director's like, okay. And they did that. And it's touch move. That means white is required to do this. Because your opponent touched your bishop. Mm -hmm. If they can take your bishop, they have to. And they can. Touch move. Yes? Pork has a question, but he can't raise his hand. Okay, what's the question? Um, you say he's required to move there, but what if he just resigns? Also good. Even better. Right. No, I mean, he can't do something else like this. Yeah, right. You can always resign. Yeah. Your time can run out. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my opponent can't legally move his knight, so he doesn't have to. Because he can't. If he could, then he has to. Okay, so he took my queen, and I took back. Now, I'm threatening this knight fork. So he moved his rook. And now something really funny happened. Um... I made a move which I knew wasn't good, but I knew it would work out, and I was wrong. It didn't work out. So obviously, my opponent's attacking my pawn, and I can defend it, but I intentionally didn't defend it. I castled. And my reasoning was, I'm threatening knight c2 check and checkmate. And then I win. Hooray for me. Right? Exactly. And... The obvious way to stop that is actually to take the pawn. So white takes the pawn, and he stops bishop c4 mate, because his knight's defending that. And I said, my opponent takes my pawn, and I attack his knight. He only has one good move, but I'll never find it. And I've showed this to several classes, and they never find it. You know who did find it? The guy I was playing. I've shown this to very strong players, and they don't see the only move. This guy's 700. He found it. Now, I'm attacking his knight, you agree. Mm -hmm. If the knight moves away to here, 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 or here, I take it for free. So there's three other squares. This one, I also take it for free because I have two guys on it, and he has one defending it. This one walks into the checkmate I just showed you. Checkmate. Mm -hmm. And the other one, is defended by the bishop, but once I check you, now it's not. So actually, all eight knight moves lose the knight. Now, you can attack my knight. Then when I check you, I take your knight. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there's no way he'll find the right move. And then he found the right move. Horrible. Can anybody find the right move for Wyatt? It's not moving the knight. It's threatening one of my pieces. It's not threatening the knight, because the knight can go here with check. And it's not these pieces, those are too far away. What's the only other piece? If it's not any of these, yeah? The bishop. The bishop. How can he attack my bishop? Yeah? Why is it flashing red? Oh, because the, the computer's broken. Oh, no, wait, I'm doing that. Yeah. I was just showing the bishop. Yes. Yeah? I think there's only one way to threaten the bishop. Let's see there. Yeah, yeah. With the bishop? Yeah. So he played bishop c4. And that's the only good move. When I turn the engine on, it says black is winning unless he plays bishop c4, then it's fine. Okay, of course he played bishop c4. Okay. And now I saw bishop c4. I'm like, he'll never find that. And then he found it. Okay. Then I tricked him next move. So he played a good move, and the next move wasn't good. Now the idea is, if I take this, he takes that with check. And if I take this, takes back with the knight. Okay. So I played knight c2 check, and he made the losing move. He only has two moves. Because he's in check. He can move his king to f1 or to e2. And one of them is equal, and one loses. He found the losing one. Fat. If it didn't lose, I would play his move. His move makes more sense to me. I don't like king f1. It blocks the white rook on each one. I like this, so the rook can get out. But that loses. Oh. And he didn't see why it lost. That's the one he picked. Yeah. And now I have... I don't even know what tactic this is called. It's called something. So I want to take his knight, but then he takes my bishop. So I can defend my bishop and then take his knight next. You might say, well, wait a minute. If you defend your bishop, he'll move his knight away. 
Well, I defended my bishop and put him in check. How did I put him in check and defend my bishop? You should see how confused the audience looks. Oh, okay. Now they look less confused. Think of where the bishop, the king, and the, the white king and the black bishop are in relation to each other. Like, if, you, if they were on the same side, what could you do? There's not many moves that put this king in check. I think there's four. There's treating the bishops. There's checking with the bishop, which gives the bishop away. There's checking with the rook, which is crazy. Right. Then there's the normal move. Do you see the other check? It's not this, it's not this, and it's not that. There's one more check. Bob Seeger would know, and that hint's not going to help her. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, I'm with the knight. How come I said Bob Seeger would know, and she instantly raised her hand? <laughs> All right, right. I check with the knight. And now, not only is he in check, I'm defending my bishop. Like if they were up the same yeah. side, it would be a fork. So he got out of check, and then I took his knight, and I'm up a knight. Ray, if he had played king f1, he'd, he'd still be in the game, but he played king e2. Okay, so check, and now I'm up a piece. Okay, and at the end of the game, I decided to sacrifice a piece. So here I'm up a piece, I could just move my knight away, I'm up a piece. But I took this, and I was like, I dare you to take my piece. And he's like, quiet. So he took my piece. And I went here. Now, Black's ahead of pawn, and I'm threatening checkmate. But he didn't stop the checkmate. There's only one way to stop checkmate. And it still doesn't really work. So if he makes a random legal move, I play knight check. He only has one move. And now, I have checkmate in one move. Who can find it? No. <laughs> How does black put white in checkmate? I guess. Maybe guess. It ain't nothing but a G thing. G five. G five. Checkmate. Right. So he has to stop that checkmate. Well, he has to stop knight f four. And the only way to do that is knight to d5. Oh, okay. And then I would have played c6, and then, I don't know, he resigns. Okay, <laughs> so instead he attacked my rook, and I checked him, and he was like, oh, g5 mate is coming. So he gave up here. Although he should let me mate him, that would be nice. And he gave him a checkmate, right? Yeah. Okay, so those games were played on last Saturday. And then yesterday, I played against one of my students. And... Um, she didn't resign. I tell her not to resign. She doesn't listen, but she didn't resign this game. So she sort of listened. And she played quite well, I thought. And she was confused during the game. I'll show you how she was confused. It was actually funny. So she played E4. Now, when you play people who aren't grandmasters, and they're not super experienced, even if they are, a good idea is to play something not very common. What's the most common move for black here? You, E5. E5. And if you go to a scholastic tournament, that's a lot of games. E4, E5, a lot. Okay? And so, well, my student's nine years old, and she's rated 900, so I got to play something she doesn't know. She'll know E5. So I played Knight F6. Okay? And that's not very common, and I don't play that, but I want to get her out of what she knows. And E5 is the most normal move. But she played knight c3, defending her pawn. And now it's still most normal to play e5, but she took. And black is already doing pretty reasonably here. Then she attacked my knight again. I attacked her bishop. And I remember when I was considering playing this with white a long time ago, a book that I had said, black should go take this bishop. And then black has the two bishops, because I like bishops. And so I didn't like that for white, so I did it with black. I played knight c6, and after d3, which is sort of passive, I was like, well, I don't have to do that. I can just go in the middle and do it. And now this is very interesting, and this is a tactic that I teach a lot. She played knight f3, and now there's a very simple blunder, which I didn't make. I should have made it so I can teach the class. 
If I had made the blunder, would she have punished me? That would have been, that's a good, good question. If she did punish me, I might have lost. So I didn't do it. The obvious move, which is a relative pin, is bishop g4. Okay? And that's actually a blunder, and now white's winning. Okay, and the reason is, the bishop on g4 is not defended. If it was defended, then it'd be fine. Although, not really. Uh, you with the wrong answer. Bishop takes our seven. Incorrect. That's the right answer. I asked for the wrong answer. Okay, so he can, she can, he can, she can play bishop f7, and then 95 check. Notice it's check, and then I lose my bishop. Okay, now another move which doesn't work is 95, sacrificing the queen. Takes the queen, checkmate, which is good for white. However, black doesn't have to get checkmated. Black could actually go here, and black's okay. Okay, but, yeah. Okay, so I didn't play bishop g4. Now, another of my students, who's also female, like other than this is a nine-year-old girl, the other one is not a nine-year-old girl, and she was playing Jay Ashry. And in this position, about two months ago, my student made the losing move. It's the same losing move. She played bishop g4. And now Jay Ashry could have played bishop takes, knight g5 check, and then taken the bishop. Instead, Jay Ashri played another tactic. She played knight e5, that same checkmate that I showed you. Bishop takes queen, checkmate. Now again, you don't have to get checkmated, just don't get checkmated. Yeah. So she took the knight, and then took the bishop, and there were further blunders later, okay, which beyond the scope of this class. Okay, so um, now, I'll show you one more thing, then we'll get back to the game. There's an opening you never heard of called the Nimzo Indian. Right, Archer? Yeah. Okay. That's this position. The Nimzo Indian, I've had this position several times when I'm white, and I never go here. And I just showed you two examples of why I never go there. This is a third example. They take on f2, and they play knight g4 check, and then they take my bishop. But I don't do that because I don't want to lose. All right. So I don't play bishop g5. Okay. So that, that didn't happen. I didn't play bishop g4 here. I played knight takes bishop. Okay. Now, I kept pinning her knights. And we got to this position. This is pretty funny. So this is terrible for white. Because this knight is incredibly pinned. It's the most pinned. And it's attacked a lot. And here, my opponent found the only move that defends her knight again. See how it's defended twice? And it's attacked three times. Okay, what's the only move that defends the knight again? Not easy to find. Anybody? No, no one. You in the back. Yeah. Bishop E5? Right. Now, I attack the bishop. The bishop has to stay on the knight. Okay. Now, I thought if I played e5, she could just take that and her bishop stays on her knight. But if I play c5, then she can't. Okay. And she played here. And now I, I made a bad move. And once again, <laughs> I, I knew what was going on. And I figured my opponent couldn't figure it out. And not only did my opponent figure it out, she didn't know she figured it out when she was figuring it out. So I was sort of right. She didn't figure it out, but she still made the right moves. Now, in this position, the computer says black is completely winning and it castles queenside. Okay? And I knew that what I did wasn't right, but I thought there's no way that it's not going to work. And it didn't work. Now, if I was playing a Grandmaster, I wouldn't do what I did, because I know that they're going to figure it out. So I just took this. And the idea is, I'm threatening mate, because I said so. Right? And I'm threatening the queen. And I want a pawn. And I knew it didn't work, but I figured she would never know why. And in, in, in fact, she didn't know why, and she still played perfect. 
I guess it's lucky she's my student, so I get some credit for teaching her, but I'm still mad. So she played the only move that stops mate. How do you stop checkmate? Queen takes c3. Queen takes c3. Now I'm up a queen. Sounds good, right? But now when she plays bishop d2, my queen's trapped. The reason it's trapped is because I played c5 attacking her bishop. My pawn was on c6, I could move my queen back. All right. And I knew all this could happen, but I figured, well, she might not want to give up her queen, and then I'll mate her. Or she'll give up her queen and not see bishop d2. So I was like, well, okay, I have a good chance of just winning. And then when she played here, I was like, ugh. <laughs> when the game, now, I made the move here. I took the bishop, and the look on her face, like she couldn't believe I gave my queen away. She was like, she, like what, what's going on? This, and she didn't realize that there's nowhere to go. I told her after the game, she said, there was nowhere to go? When the game ended, I said, you look really surprised when I gave my queen away. And she was like, yeah. And I said, my queen was trapped. She said, your queen was trapped? <laughs> right. So she attacked my queen, but didn't know I couldn't move anywhere. She just thought I'd move it somewhere, but I can't move anywhere. Okay. Now, during the game, I thought, I thought about playing this move, confusing the audience, oh. and then check, and then this fork. I decided not to do it. Let's see what the computer says. I didn't look with the computer, so I don't know. Oh, I didn't see Bishop E4. Oh, man, if I had seen that, I could have got some brilliancy prize. Wow, it even likes the one I showed you better than what I did. <laughs> oh, I totally missed Bishop E4. That's so nice. Oh, man, I wish I had seen that. Maybe if I thought for three minutes, I would have seen it instead of moving it one second. Oh, I missed bishop e4. Ah. So the idea is, if she takes, my queen's not trapped anymore. Ah. Yeah. And if she doesn't take, then bishop e4 is really good. I take all her pieces. Oh man, bishop e4. Yeah, she just take my queen and I win all her pieces. Oh, and I'd be up, I'd be up and exchange it a pawn. I could win that. Oh, okay, I didn't see bishop e4. Yeah, that's too easy. Okay, so I took this. And I don't like what she, she should take with the knight, I think, so her knight can go to c4. But she took with the rook. Let me see if I was right or she was right. Okay, I'm barely right. I was barely right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a pawn up. So that's good. Okay. So I'll show you the book. Yeah. So in this position, she made a really bad move. It was the baddest move recommended by Michael Jackson. And then after he saw this move, he died. It's funny, I've been making fun of Michael Jackson for years, for obvious reasons. And at chess camp, whenever the kids were playing, and they said, do I have black or white? I would say, Michael Jackson says it doesn't matter. Okay? <laughs> and then, um, when kids are misbehaving in my chess camp, I'm like, if you keep misbehaving, I'll send you to Michael Jackson's house. Then they would start behaving. Okay, so I had a lot of Michael Jackson jokes. During a chess camp in Charlotte, before you were all born, uh, Michael Jackson died during the camp. Not at my camp, but, you know, his house. And it was, like, on a Wednesday, I think. And so I was teaching the camp. So, like, Monday, Tuesday, making fun of Michael Jackson. Then on Wednesday, Michael Jackson died. Then on Thursday, I was like, well, Michael Jackson died. I can't, like, what am I supposed to do now? How can I teach the camp anymore? Right. So I basically play Michael Jackson songs the rest of the camp. So he did it. So watch what she did. See this bishop is all over this, this diagonal? And you see how I can take this pawn? She like hooked me up like big time. She played D4. That like really helps me because now I, I got all this, I got everything going on here. So that D4 was really bad. So if I turn on the engine, it's gonna say 1.4. Okay, my position is better than I thought by, by a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Man, somebody's an hour late to the class. All right. Oh. We changed the time of the class to 11 a.m. Ask her. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Came to class at yeah. I knew somebody wouldn't know. Yeah. Okay. So when I when I play the move D4, see this button that's gray? What color is it going to turn? Red. red. Red means bad. It better turn red because I don't know. Okay, good. Now it's red. That means don't do that move. So she made my bishop really, 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 really good. Also really good. Yeah. So I took the pawn. Now did she take back? 
I guess not because the computer won't let me because it's pinned. What kind of pin? It's not relative anymore. Absolute pin? Absolute. Now, if you're playing your mom and she can't move something, that's a relative pin because she's your relative. If you're drinking vodka, that's against the rules. That's an absolute pin against the rules. Did you get my absolute joke, vodka? Okay. Yes, you. What's vodka? Good, good question. Yeah. Vodka is a drink that you're not allowed to drink. Beer? It's like beer, but it's worse. Yeah. Poison? Yeah. In fact, let me tell you, let me tell you a story about vodka. You ever clean something? You see somebody cleaning, they spray it and they wipe. You could do that with vodka. That'll clean it up. Yeah. So, yeah, you, it's, it's poison, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. If you drink too much vodka, then you won't be alive anymore. So it is poison. Yeah. So drinking absol Absolute is a kind of vodka. That's the name of the company. So you can't drink Absolute, that's illegal. Absolute pen's illegal. You. Porn's eyes would have been very wide when he said that you wouldn't be alive anymore, but they're always very wide because he's cute. Uh, okay. All right. So, so my opponent, she took my pawn, and I took the pawn, and she moved her king. Okay. Now we got this position, and this is really cool. Now watch the way I think. Watch. I actually did everything I thought of. Now. I'd like to promote my pawn, because that seems like a good idea. Okay, so I calculated the following variation. Check, she has to take. Takes, she has to take. And then I pin her knight. Now what does she have to do? There's only one move that makes any sense. How do you save your knight? I'm going to take it for free. You got to protect it. You got one way to protect it. See, this I thought was easy, but I guess not. Need archery here. So here, protecting the knight. Now, if I take the knight, then, then she can take back. Okay. okay. And I was like, oh man, that knight's pinned. How can I attack it? I said, well, I could cheat. That, that's a good move, right? Yeah. Okay, so I calculated that, and I said, okay, let's do that. So I played e5. And now, if it's my move, I can do all that stuff I showed you, and then play e4 at the end. Okay, so she has to do something about that. What, I'm not sure. Maybe knight d2, maybe blocking my rook, maybe. Let's see what the computer says. I think it's knight d2. Yeah, knight d2, or, yeah, she has to move her knight. Knight d2 or knight h4. Okay. Instead, after e5, she wasn't too suspicious. She played h4. Now I can do all that stuff I showed you. Check, check, pin, and e4. Yay, hurry for me. Yeah. Now I win her knight for free. And I tell all my students, when you have a pinned piece, you want to attack it with other things. So her knight's pinned, so I attacked it with something else. Um, uh, my... Coach for my other Sunday chef class always says that you're supposed to put pressure on the pin piece. That's right. Yeah, pressure on the pin piece. That's right. So I did. I played e5. Okay. And she didn't resign. That was good. Now, remember I said the illegal moves are coming? And we saw last game the illegal move. Now we see another one. Okay. My opponent attacked my pawn because my opponent attacked my pawn. I defended my pawn and I queened my pawn. That's great. I played e3. I want to queen my pawn and I had to defend my pawn that way, which she didn't see. Just see, see that? See what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here she played king takes pawn and before she hit the clock, I said no. My, and she was like, ah, oh, because she realized all this thing, this idea she had, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So then she played here. Now, what I could have done is stop the clock and called the director, which is me. Okay. And what could I have done? What rule did she break? I didn't care if so I didn't say anything. Yeah? No illegal moves? No. When she made the illegal move, she didn't hit her clock in. I told her that you can't do that. So it wasn't illegal yet. But then when she did that, she broke a rule. I still did. I, I never told her. I could tell her next lesson. I gave her lessons. Next lesson, I'm going to tell her the rule she broke.
You guys didn't notice? I told you this before too. I told you the last time the legal move was played. No moving into check? No, this is, this is okay. That's not moving into check. This move breaks a rule. I could have enforced it, but I didn't care because I don't care. That was not very good. Okay. She broke the touch move rule. Oh. She touched her king and took my pawn and she can't take my pawn, but she still touched her king. So she has to move her king. I could make her move her king, but that move is worse, so I let that go. It doesn't matter I'm going to win anyway. Yeah, and by the way, this is very funny. When my son was little, he was very rule-bound. Now he's not. <clears throat> anyway, so when he was like four or five years old, he was enforcing rules that hurt him. And I said, Spencer, my son's name, he was, you know, not a strong chess player. He was okay. And I said, when your opponent like touch their bishop and made an illegal move and they have to move their bishop but they didn't and they made a move that like lost a queen you should like take their queen but you said no no don't do that go move your bishop and he was like oh yeah so he was enforcing the rules that made it worse for him and i was like you don't have to make them play touch move if their move is worse like let them play their worst move and he was like oh so my opponent has to move her king because she touched her king, but she gave her pawn away. So I'm, that's fine. I'll take her pawn. Okay. So if your opponent is required to do something, if you make them, but you don't make them, you don't have to make them. That could be better for you because they made a much worse move. So, okay. It doesn't matter here. If, the, the reason, if, if it didn't matter, I would have said something, but it doesn't matter. So, okay. And then this position, I found the quickest mate, I think. I checked and she has one legal move, so she played it. And then I went here and she has one legal move, so she played it. And then I went here and she has one legal move, so she played it. See, I could analyze that. And now, confusing the audience, ready to be confused, I have three different checkmates. Do you see any of them? I have three. So what I have to do is check the king. I have to check the king. And where can the king go? No, no, yes. So I have to check the king and stop this. Notice what file that's on. Mm. You. Use the queen. Use the queen where? Here? Uh, Here. To go to A3. Right. A5. No, you're, both, you're right. Queen A5 is mate. Queen A3 is mate. I still didn't play those. I played the other one. What's the other one? Queen A1? Yep. Yeah. Mate. They're all mate. Yeah. And I think that's the quickest mate here. Let's see if the computer makes fun of me. Yeah, queen C3, and then king, and then king D6, and then king C7. Yeah. And then the computer says mate, mate, mate. Yeah. If I put an extra one on, I think there, I think there's no other mates. Nope, that's the only mate, and yeah, that's the only ones. And then I won, yay! Right? Yeah, exactly. It was almost stalemate. Then I wouldn't win. I had to make sure it wasn't stalemate. Man, this is close to stalemate, isn't it? Good thing they can go here. So, but I knew that. I always look for stalemate when my opponent has nothing left. Yeah. So I think of all those games, my student did the best, even though. She was only rated 900. What's funny is she has a twin brother and he's rated 1800. Also, she's older than him, right? By, by two minutes. Huh. By two minutes? Yeah, they're twins. Yeah. But he, he's rated 900 points higher than her. I've never played him. I've played her twice already. Because when she has a buy, sometimes she wants to play me. We offered for her to play Karen, and she wanted to play me instead. But she wanted me to spot her a queen. And I said, we can't play a rated game where I spot you a queen. And she's mm -hmm. like, all right. I said, you can spot me a queen. I'm the director. I'll rate that. Because <laughs> yeah. absolute power abuses absolutely or something. Yeah. Corruption, something. All right. And that's our class. So I recommend playing people that are half your rating. Or in one case, a third of my rating. Or the fourth. Harsh. Right? So if you're rated 1,000, play people rated 200. All right, yay.
Good job. Nobody fell asleep, I think. I don't